Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, NAB 2016 on the exhibit floor, and I am here with Clifton Stommel of Stommel House. Yes. Now, you have invented and created a product that you have right here mm -hmm. called the Attic C2S, and it's a very unique product, a product that actually I have been using all day as well, but I'll let you tell us sort of what we've got here. So what is this? Okay, so the Attic C2S um, was initially developed as a response to the sort of crazy prices of CFAST cards when they first came out. Um, I think everyone knows about that. Um, since then, the prices have sort of stabilized, but they're you know, a little high for, for some, and other people think that it's you know, maybe a little more reasonable, which is fine. Um, you know, throughout its development and its use and you know, its, its uh, performance on sets, it really became apparent to us that it's more than just a cost-saving solution, it actually turned into an opportunity to get longer record times for people who are shooting on compressed RAW or even compressed RAW as high as 4K or 4.6K. So um, what it is in a nutshell, to oversimplify, yeah. is um, a pair of dummy CFAST cables that route up to a power regulated box and a SATA to CFAST interface bridge internally. So when you actually plug in SSDs in here, all the way up to two terabytes per bay, the camera believes the SSDs are actually CFAST cards. And the product is managed completely by the internal camera system. So you can format in camera, you get the full raw you know, codec, you don't have to worry about you know, your external recorder recording ProRes out of a UHD feed. You can get your proper 4K, you can get your actual 4.6K, you can do the raw, you can do the compressed raw, you can do everything you do in the camera that you would do in a CFAST card. You have access to right here I'll straight to an SSD instead. And that's perfect because you know, we're, you're holding the Ursa Mini right here, and I'm shooting on an Ursa Mini, but uh, this is not the only camera that's using these CFast cards. CFast is taking right. up where CF left off. So it this really is, is. going to be the next generation of cards, and right Absolutely. now they are expensive, and their sizes, I believe, max out at about 512 a piece, and you're spending a fortune for those. Right. But SSDs are going the other way. They're coming down in price, and their storage capacity is just going up and up, up and, and up. up and, up. and yep. so for, you know, whether it's a cost effective thing or just a workflow and reliability thing, um, you know, using SSDs to be able to record from whether it's an Ursa Mini or an Ursa or other cameras like, you know, the, what the new C300 Mark II right. will take CFast cars and who knows what cameras into the future. Right. You've got a box that'll allow you to just adapt that and run and You've got so much more storage space. And right. the fact that it plugs in and it works, there's no special formatting. Formatting camera, it literally works just as a larger card as from exactly. what the camera sees. Exactly. And especially when you look at large production rigs, where you've got monitors and external, you know, wireless transmitters mm -hmm. and uh, multiple backup batteries, you know, the Attic C2S really is, you know, one more piece in a large collection of stuff. So, you know, if you like if you've seen, you know, B and H's booth where they've got all the cameras set up. You know, the Attic C2S by itself on the camera, you know, some, some may say it's a, it's a little more cumbersome than obviously just the camera by itself. Um, and it has to be because SSDs physically don't fit in those little bays. Yeah, they're a larger um, form factor. But, you know, as it is, a lot of, we have a lot of documentary filmmakers, a lot of feature filmmakers, a lot of music video shooters that shoot run and gun handheld style, you know, um, people who, you know, have the monitor shut as far as it'll go. Shoulder mounting is not a problem. It doesn't get in the way of your head. So we have people, you know, we, we at our production company, we actually fly this in a gimbal, um, mounting the attic directly to the gimbal like a monitor, and you know, it doesn't get in the way. So really, by having it as a free-floating system that you can connect with like a, like a magic arm um, to reposition wherever you want the camera rather than a permanent camera mod or, or, or fixture, allows you the flexibility to use it for any number of, you know, of shooting situations. So really, it's, uh, I mean, it's like at first glance, it's sort of, you know, one, one fifth the size of the camera itself, but well, this it can live anywhere, camera. right? Yeah. This particular camera. Yeah. Um, right now, it only works with the Blackmagic cameras. Okay. So we'd like to, we'd like to get the bridge interface with the C300 Mark IIs, um, but they have a latching bay door we need to work through. Um, we're working with Ari on potentially getting, you know, SSDs of really just the highest caliber, you know, yeah. um, registered with their, with their system. We know they're fast enough. You know, I believe they've got to know they're fast enough. And um, you know, we're starting that discussion now. So if we can get this on an RE, great. That'll be the probably the easiest thing to bridge. We just got to get their their support on it. Um, if we can get on a C300, it may require like a clip system modification, which we're also willing to develop. Um, 
I know the AJA Scion is coming out with an adapter for their proprietary SSDs to open CFast. Uh, once that's out, you know, we'll be working on getting that to work as well. Very We'd cool. really like to have everyone out there able to shoot their cinema cameras, their proper cinema cameras, onto SSDs. And we were talking a little bit about the flexibility of it and the possibility of using it with other cameras. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is extremely flexible because of you have the both mounting solution for it mm -hmm. and the powering solution for it. So tell me a little bit about, I know we talked last night about the range of voltages that you can take and yeah. how you have it connected. It's not specific to just black magic. Well, right now that's what you're working with. Right. It can very easily in the future be expanded. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so um, since moving all of the power regulation internally from our original version of the product to what we have launched now, um, it'll take anywhere from 12 to 24 volts completely safely. Um, in a pinch, we've seen people use uh, a laptop powered cable to power this thing and like a anything power with that barrel anything connector with right this barrel there connector. and 12 to 24 volts will run it. That's right. And, um, and right now we've got it with a D-tap coming off of the plate at the back. Right. So everything's run off of that battery for the for the whole system. Yep. And we supply the D-tap cable for because that's the most universal option. Whether you're whether you're gold mount or V-lock, you've got a D-tap. Yeah. Uh, for those who have all the D-taps used up, like the rigs you saw over there. Um, if you actually need to pull power off the XLR, there are four pin XLR to, to, to the DC barrel connectors out there and you can absolutely pull power off of that. Basically anywhere you can figure out a way to pull 12 volts at least from it, you're going to exactly. be able to run them. Precisely. Uh, that's fantastic and it's got a quarter 20 mount at the bottom so you can use the magic arm or like you said, you can mount it onto a different point on a gimbal system yep. or whatever rig you want, you can you can put it off the side. It doesn't have to be in this configuration. That's right. Uh, it's it's awesome. I, like I said, uh, you, you've you loaned me a unit. I've been using it on my camera setup all day. Right. I've been recording more data than I possibly could have with the CFast cards right that on. I brought along with me. Um, and so, and tonight I'll get to see how easy it is to offload with the SSDs, just just cool. as if it were a regular media card. We so are looking forward to hearing about hearing about how that goes for you, for sure. Yeah. We want to we want to know a detailed feedback from you. And sure. so, you guys are showing it off here. This is your first time coming to NAB and showing it off. We've been getting a lot of questions. Um, where can people check this out, get a hold of it, and what's the price right now on this? So you can buy it either from b directly okay. or from us at our website, um, stommelhaus.com, spelled H-A-U-S, that's super German. House. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, we actually have a, a page on our site that describes the product and has a link out to our, our checkout system. Okay. Again, most people, I think, will just go to B&H because it's what they're used to, and it's you know, really, they, their customer service is great. Yeah, it's great um, you got B&H distribution for it. That's fantastic. Yeah, we're, we're very glad to because we want to we wanna begin, we want to make this available to everyone, and we want to get it yeah. pushed through the the largest channels possible to have anyone who wants to take a take a stab at this that we want them to have access to it. Um, the price point is $599.95 okay. is the MSRP and so you know for effectively the price of you know a retail 256 gig CFast card you can have the product that eliminates the need for them. Um, Very good. Yeah and you know and whether like I said whether you're flying on a gimbal, shoulder rig, whatever have you you know there are absolutely configurations that make this work um, you know, whether you whether you want to have maybe a, a CFast or two on hand for whatever else you want to use, that's fine. You know, we're we're not it we're not anti-solution anti people. Yeah. We're extra solution people. Yeah. So we want we want to give people the option to do everything they want to be able to do with their camera, including do you know their super high res raw, uncompressed or compressed. We want them to be able to do super long takes, and you know this this opens the door to those options. Very well said. I think it's great. Cool. Uh, there you go, guys. You'll be hearing a little bit more later on about what I think of uh, my time using the Attic C2S, but for right now, I'm pretty happy with it. It's been great. Um, we, as Stumble House, would definitely like to thank Blue Shape. These guys have been a huge support from the beginning. Um, they've helped, other, helped us, honestly, personally, with our power regulation system while we were first developing this product. And you know, we're here as a, as, a, as a vendor guest of them, and they've been absolutely phenomenal. So we definitely don't want to miss the opportunity to give a shout out to these guys. Their batteries are phenomenal. They've got some really cool new stuff. I'm gonna get a little quick little plug here. <laughs> this little tiny blue shaped battery is a 95 watt hour battery that is the smallest, shortest battery of that capacity I've seen so far. And the same size physical dimensions um, they have for a 140 watt hour. This is like one of their new products. Wow. You may wanna ask them about it. It's super cool. Um, I'd be shocked if you couldn't fly this on a gimbal. So yeah, I might have to definitely talk worth to them noting. Next. Yeah, <laughs> anyone who's looking into the camera like a Nursa Mini should definitely check out these new little mini batteries are like we're about right. to stock up ourselves <laughs> cool yeah. sounds good well there you go cool thank you